Amazon's Project Kuiper satellite constellation is falling behind. They announced a new slip and they only have two more years to get half of their constellation up. That's about 1600 satellites, but honestly, I don't think the slip's gonna matter that much and I'm gonna tell you why. So let's back up. The satellite constellation in question is Project Kuiper, which is Amazon's project. You already have heard, I'm sure, about SpaceX's constellation Starlink, and there's other ones, O3B. These are communication satellites. They are meant to provide communications in low Earth orbit specifically down to Earth. And there's no real definition of what a constellation of satellites is. There's no hard, fast number. These are large numbers of satellites, larger than what we've typically seen historically. And so Project Hyper is envisioned by Amazon to be a 3,232 satellite constellation in low Earth orbit. It was thought that the service would start this year, 2024. However, Amazon announced yesterday that it is actually slipping that to start in 2025. And they're still hoping to launch their first production satellites at the end of this year, the, the last quarter of this year. But as things tend to go in the space industry, usually things at the end of the year tend to slip a little bit. Now, one thing it does have going for it is that it's supposed to launch on a United Launch Alliance a ULA Atlas V rocket. And those are already in existence. They're very well known. Um, it's not a new rocket. And so it, if it is delayed, it probably won't be delayed for terribly long. But there is no set date right now. So they're not even saying if it's going to launch in October versus December. And that might make a difference. If it's December, there might be a slip into the new year. And that really doesn't make too much of a difference because they're already saying that they're not going to start service until 2025. Because just because you launch a satellite doesn't always mean you're going to start the service immediately. They were hoping to start this service this year. They already have customers contracted. I'll talk about that later. And it's one of these things where a slip of a year is almost expected. And so it's not a big deal. But what is a bigger deal is that according to the Federal Communications Commission, the FCC license that they've been granted, they have until December 2026 to launch half of their constellation. So, you know, roughly 1600 satellites launched between now and June of 2026. They have two years to launch 1600 satellites and they have launched nothing right now. Now, I will talk about the two uh, demo satellites that they did launch in a moment. But for right now, I just want to have you think about that number. They have two years to launch 1600 satellites. And I don't know how many satellites they can fit per launch. I think it depends on the launch vehicles. I'm going to talk about which launch vehicles they're launching on. But that's, that's a tall order, especially when it's already been delayed for this long. And then they have another three years after that, so until 2029, to launch their entire constellation of 3,200 satellites. They are on a ticking clock. And the reason why the FCC does it this way, they don't want any company saying that we are going to launch some huge number of satellites, set aside this amount of broadband for us, and... Um, you know, we're just going to hold that forever. That's not what the FCC is wanting. They're wanting to, to have these companies be held accountable to say, if we set this aside for you, you better use it within this time frame. You better start using it within this time frame. And the reason why I don't think this part is such a big deal is because they can always get their license modified. The FCC also knows that there are slips. There is progress in launching the satellites for Project Kuiper that there won't be, you know, that, that there will be a problem with getting the license to, uh, extended, um, the deadline extended. So I don't think that is actually too big of a deal. What's a bigger deal is who they've contracted the launches with because most of the launches are set to take place on rockets that are not yet operational. So I already talked about the Atlas V. There are eight launches manifested for Project Kuiper on ULA's Atlas V. It's, it's an operational rocket. It's been operational for a long time. I don't see any concern with those eight launches. They're still aiming to launch on an Atlas V by the end of this year. So that's their next launch here. They already did launch two prototype satellites on an Atlas V, which they've since deorbited. And those were to just test out the satellites to make sure that they have everything working the way they want before they go into production, which makes total sense. There's only one other rocket that they've contracted with that is currently operational. But before I go into that one, I wanna talk about the ones that they've contracted with to launch on that are not yet operational. We have 38 launches on ULA's new Vulcan Centaur, and I, I take it back, Vulcan is operational. It had its first launch in January. 
it's busy. <laughs> it's busy in the sense that it is focused on getting its certification for national security missions. And so they just announced yesterday that instead of putting a real payload on their next Vulcan rocket, it was supposed to be Sierra Space's Dream Chaser. But instead of doing that, because Sierra Space isn't confident that they can get Dream Chaser on Vulcan on time, they're just going to launch nothing. They're going to launch an inert payload. They're going to launch, you know, just mass, <laughs> which is a shame, honestly. But that's telling me that ULA understandably is focused on national security payloads rather than launching Project Kuiper payloads on Vulcan. I don't know when Vulcan is going to prioritize Project Kuiper. My guess is not until it's exhausted its Atlas V launches. I mean, that's just a guess. I don't think they've said, but my guess is they're going to launch those eight Atlas V Project Kuiper launches before they launch any Project Kuiper satellites on Vulcan. That's just a guess, but that just makes perfect sense to me because Vulcan's busy. It's again, it's doing national security missions. The Department of defense actually fined ULA an undisclosed amount of money, probably something like token, because of the delays of Vulcan, because there's a large number of sat national security payloads waiting for Vulcan to come online. So that's got to be their priority. That, that's their bread and butter. It's always been ULA's bread and butter is launching these government missions and especially national security missions. And so it's great that Project Kuiper is contracted with ULA Vulcan, but um, yeah, I don't see those happening yet, but there are 38 of them. So that's a significant number of Vulcan launches. So it is a high priority customer. So I don't know what their prioritization is going to be. I guess we'll just have to find out. There are 18 launches scheduled for Aeon Space's Ariane 6. Ariane 6 is not yet operational, although in a few weeks, I hope it will be. It is currently scheduled for its initial launch on July 9th. So let's hope that everything goes smoothly and there's no delays if there's any problems with the rockets and that they can start launching customer payloads for for Project Kuiper and for other customers. The European space community is going through some reprioritizations right now where they're trying to understand how much Europe should focus on European payloads uh, launching on European rockets. And this is a whole other topic, but it's currently a, an active debate in the news right now. And so I don't really know how, you know, Arian Space is going to prioritize a American payload over a European payload. And I don't know if that even matters. There are 18 launches on Ariane 6. There are 12 scheduled for Blue Origin's New Glenn. When Project Kuiper was first announced, it was rumored or spec there was speculation that all of the launches would go to Blue Origin because Blue Origin and Amazon are both owned by Jeff Bezos. Hasn't been the case. They're, they're two separate entities for one thing. They've got two separate purposes, obviously. And so Project Kuiper didn't automatically to go to Blue Origin. Blue Origin's New Glenn is not operational yet. They're hoping to have their first launch here in 2024, but that's not scheduled yet. Hoping everything goes well. I, I actually have pretty high faith in that because they've already tested the engines on Vulcan, but they do have 12 on New Glenn with an option of adding an additional 15. So it could be as many as 27 launches on New Glenn. And then when this news came out that Project Kuiper was contracting with all these companies, especially all these companies that were not yet operational with their larger rockets, the big question was, why did Project Kuiper not contract with SpaceX? And is it because of the rivalry between Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk? It, 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 it's a contentious rivalry over years. Um, I mean, obviously the two are competing in the launch arena between Blue Origin and SpaceX, but they've got other... Uh, snipers, they, they've done other sniping. <laughs> I'm not going to go into that. But basically, the whole question was, did you purposely leave out SpaceX? SpaceX is the workhorse of the world in terms of launch. Why are you not contracting with them? And in fact, there was a lawsuit by some pension holders um, who said that you are not doing your fiduciary responsibility by not contracting these launches on SpaceX. And so I don't know what happened with that lawsuit, but I do know that they went ahead and added three Falcon 9 launches to this manifest for mid-2025. So even though Falcon 9 is operational, it's a busy rocket, and I don't know if it was SpaceX saying that they can't launch until mid 2025, or if it was Amazon saying they can't launch until 2025, but they're not gonna be launching on Falcon 9 for another year. So that tells me that they're putting a lot of focus right now on getting their satellites ready to ship them to Florida to launch on an Atlas V. Um, by the way, all of these rockets are launching from Florida, Kennedy Space Center, uh, Cape Canaveral, 
except for Ariane 6. So they actually, uh, Amazon actually has a production facility, uh, a facility to integrate the Project Kuiper satellites into rockets down in Florida. They also just opened up a new facility in Washington where Amazon hopes to increase production of these satellites up to five a day. And if it's up to five a day, I do wonder how many they are making right now. And that's probably the source of the delay. They haven't said, I can't find any sources that say what the exact cost Cause of the delay is but that's my guess is that it takes them time to build these new satellites and that they just haven't ramped up operations enough to feel like they can like start launching once they get this new facility operational to its full extent I mean it was just started in April so it's been two months I'm guessing that they're really going to try to ramp up those operations so they can crank out these satellites that they're wanting to launch thousands of them well Amazon is investing quite a bit of money in this they're investing about 10 billion dollars in Project Kuiper so it's not like they're just gonna give up I really do think that Amazon is focused on not only getting these satellites to space, but also competing against Starlink. So SpaceX Starlink has over just over 6,000 active satellites at the moment. They have at least a uh, license from the FTC to launch 7,500 Generation 2 Starlinks. And I think their goal, although it might have changed since I last heard, but I think their goal is to have about 30,000 total Starlink satellites in low Earth orbit. And that's a lot of capacity that's a lot of potential customers they have in the low to single digit millions of customers according to what they've stated they have diversified customers but I don't think this is the case that first mover takes all. I think there's actually so much demand for these communication satellites, for these internet constellations that can provide these kind of communications in low Earth orbit that I think there's no shortage of customers. And I also think as the years go on, customer base is going to grow. I think there's a high you know, available market for not just these two constellations, but the other ones as well. And there might be some first mover advantage, obviously. I mean, how can you not look at Starlink and think, wow, they have such an advantage having already launched 6,000 satellites with this many customers and this diversification. There are at least three main customers that Project Kuiper has going for it. They have Verizon, Vodafone, and Nippon Telegraph and Telephone Corporation. So those are three major companies globally that um, Project Kuiper has already secured. And I don't know, there might even be more by now. That was just the latest information that I saw. I really don't think it's going to matter to those companies if Project Kuiper is delayed from 2024 to 2025. I really don't think it's going to make any difference at all. So even though, of course, we want to see these things go when they say they're going to go, you know, starting in 2024 would have been great. Um, I don't think in the long run it's going to make any kind of difference at all. What is going to make a difference is their customer base. So who are they targeting? But it makes perfect sense to me that if you want to spread Amazon purchasing power around the world, you need more people connected to the Internet. I don't know about you, but um, my family, we use Amazon a lot <laughs> when it comes to um, not only buying things and having them delivered to our doorstep, but also um, Amazon Prime streaming, especially with the kids. So like, if you want to increase your potential customer base, you need to increase the number of customers who have access to the internet, to, to reliable internet. And how do you do that? You give them the internet. And so um, I really don't think that there is a cap anytime soon on the market for either one of these constellations or the other one coming down the road.